Hi, so I'm here with Dirk Relation, who's going to explain the modeling tool to us, the work he's been doing for Optic Studio 8 for uh, how long has he been on this now? Since April. Okay, so since April. So we'll pan over here to the Windows box, and we'll zoom in on the screen. And what am I looking at here? Well, we have here an Optic Studio image with the modeling tool loaded. Okay. So I'm going to launch the modeling tool, okay. and I'm going to create a new model. I'm going to do an example of a library collection uh -huh. where we have an author who writes books but to show a uh, hierarchy I will also presume that he can write scripts for DVDs or something okay. so I renamed the model I do right click and choose rename library collection And I have to create a new sub model. New sub model. I didn't have it. Okay. Uh, I named this authors and books. Now we're going to draw a diagram. Of mm -hmm. the problem, so I open this the diagram editor. I will enlarge the screen a bit, so I have a bit more room. And the first thing I'm going to create is a class. I double click and I get my class. We give the class a name by double clicking on the class. We can give it a name. So we're going to call this the author. In, we can make this an abstract class, but it's not, and we have a generalization specialization in which we can specify what superclass of a class will okay. be. So we keep this for uh, an object, a subclass of object. I say apply, and I add a new class. The new class will be... Normally this should write a library item. Mm -hmm. I'll make this an abstract class and it will be a subclass of object. Apply, new. The next class will be a book, which will be a superclass of a subclass I mean of library item. Okay. And then we will also add a DVD. Which will also be a subclass of library item. This will be my classes. Okay. Right now the diagram is not too nice because he automatically places them but right. we'll do some rearranging. Okay, so that looks more like a traditional hierarchy to me now. Yeah. So this is the hierarchy of our okay. object model. Now we're going to add uh, instance variables. So we're going to add instance variables to an author. I'll just create two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, name. Sorry, that was Dutch. Name. And we'll make it a string. It's an instance variable. Right. We have other uh, things we can add here. Domain is all the domains that the modeling tool knows. Okay. But if we have something that's not in the list, we can add domains from our environment by simply clicking here all domains and choose the domain that we uh -huh. want to add. Okay. To, for instance, timestamp is one that's not uh, standard in the domain list that you have to add. And then we have some special attributes, uh, special uh, items for the attributes. We, we can say it's a read write, read only, but for now it's mainly documentation. That one. So I create another one, and this one is called a uh, date of birth. And I'll make it a date. Okay. okay. Uh, the diagram is not good, so I click, right click, oh. and so I say. Hang, hang on just a sec. 
All right. So I have this the author because the instance variables are uh, are not completely displayed in the box. I can simply right click the model, fit all classes, and immediately the boxes are adapted to the length of the attributes. We're going to add some attributes to the library item, and we keep that limited to the title which is a string and a year of release I'll simply call it year and it's a small integer we'll now add a variable to book and one to DVD so you simply click on the attribute and on the object uh, the attribute for book we call ISBN, which is the special number that the individual number that books get. And on the DVD we call an instance variable which we call region for the region where the mm -hmm. DVD is playable. I also call it a mm, take a string for that. Now we still have to make the relationship between the author and the library item. So I'm going to click on association and click author and then simply release the mouse button on library item. So you just draw the line between them? Yeah. So now we have a one to one relation. I click on the relation and I can edit the relation. I can say okay the author has zero or more library items. And I suggest that the library item in this case only has one author. You see that automatically we have a, a relationship between both of them. So the library item knows about its author and the author knows immediately all his library items. I can change that by simply saying for instance on the right color that I don't want uh, the library item to have an instance variable author. So I simply click that none and the library item will not know his author. I also can have can put some details here on the cardinality, a minimum maximum. And I can also specify a delete rule. So if I delete the parent, that I also delete the child mm -hmm. relationships. So, so um, I can also still change here the association to an aggregation or uh, vice versa. Click OK, and now I'll fit all classes. I'll change the book a bit lower. The diagram is a bit nicer. And this is our so now you've starting got a point for yeah. our model. Okay. Now we're going to generate some code. Okay, so so far you haven't generated any code. I haven't you generated just any code. I just have a model. If I open the class browser, I have no code. I can show this if I look for author. Right. There's no class. I don't know how he comes on this, but there's no class author in the system. Because we are at ESUG, I have already created the package ESUG in which I will generate the code, so just to be. We go to Tools in the main menu and we say Synchronize Implementation. He automatically specifies, the f he selects the four classes and we can specify namespaces. Okay. For now, we only uh, generate code into subspaces of Epic Studio. Okay. Because otherwise we have problems with UI still. Right, right. So this is a limitation at the moment. I put off the warnings and in more, I can specify whether I want to generate to files or to a package. And we're going to generate to the ESIG package. I also can specify a change notification, non-event driven or update change mechanism. I was thinking we could add announcements there too, mm -hmm. over time. Yeah. So also we can say we want object verification for the attribute domain. So if we specify that an instance variable is a string, we cannot put a date into it. Or we can say we want to check the cardinality of the relationship or not. So as for this, there's also some other synchronization stuff like uh, merging codes when you generate it, remove methods that are not in the model. 
these are things you can specify. If oh, you and want. you can turn that off so that after you've gone ahead and written your own code that's not part of the model, yes. it doesn't blow it away. Yes. Or you can right. have it blow it away if you wanted it to. Yeah, that's that's the meaning. And then you can specify which method you want you want to get generated. For instance, if you don't want to initialize the classes, you can simply flag this out, and and then the code for init class initialization will not be generated. Okay. I'm going to generate the code now. And the code is generated. Ah, so I see it's changed the diagram for us. The diagram has methods added. The methods are now with the diagram. Right. A thing I normally do is turn this off. Now, just, just one thing. Those are UML-ish diagrams. They're not really UML, right? They're UML1 specification, oh, actually. Okay. okay. We are looking into changing it to UML2. But that will be in the second phase, probably. Right. Right. One of the things I do is I click the right button and I go to the properties. And there you can select that I don't want to see the methods, for instance, because they sort of overflow, they're overflow on the diagram. It's too much information. You can also specify that you want less items visible, for instance, one method or something. But I normally make it no methods and you'll see that you get a lot, a much better diagram when you fit them up. Move this over so we can see that. Yep, so there, shrunk it all down. Yeah. We're going to leave the object diagram for a while and we're going to look at what was generated. We have the author. This is in the model I'm still looking. So maybe I better take the class browser so to show that it's really generated the code. Mm -hmm. So there's the actual, there's the old RB. There's the actual, so this is the really the code that's in the image. Okay. So we have an author. We first looked at the class side. We have a new method. We have some model information like the domain, the relationships of the model. We have the events that were, that can, uh, happen on the model, on the on the object. And then we have a destroy method and a template value, which is used for um, UI uh, drag and drop. Mm -hmm. okay. On the instance side, we have the initialization of the uh, instance variables. Mm -hmm. We have the attribute access, like date of birth, and also the setter, and where we have a trigger event, which says date of birth changed with the date. We have a relationship maintenance. So if we add a library item to the author, we say library item insert. And the code will first check whether he can add the library item to the author. Right, so these methods over here are all those validation. The first two are validation. One to see whether the library item can be added to the author. The other checks whether the author can be added to the library ah, okay. item. And this, if that's okay, then the last two will actually do the adding. Okay. And then we have one user interface, which is as workplace object. This is also for drag and drop of objects on the UI if you want to do that. So that's a user interface for developers. Yeah. This was mainly for OS2 since once there was an OS2 version <laughs> of this. Okay. Um, now I want to add a method to the model, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put an error into it. I create a new model, a new method h, and I return four plus plus one. This should break, right? Mm -hmm. This it should, should break. break. You would ho I would hope so. So I save this, and I will regenerate the author class. Synchronize. I don't want to see the warnings. I generated. And now, if we look back at the class browser, we'll see. Oh, wait, I have to refresh it. We have a method h. Aha! And look down here in the browser, I'll zoom in on that. And you can see that that's all red. Right, but. Right now I don't care about it. Right. We're going to build a UI now. Then I'm going to change 
we're going to get into the debugger. We'll change the code into the debugger, okay. and you will see that the code will be updated ah. in the modeling tool. Okay. Let's watch that. So I go back to the modeling tool, and I'm going to create an interface. I take an interface on the author, and I want to make a new one. Here's our designer. I put a grid on it, it's just easier to create. And then we're going to controller subject. And here we get the object that we were. Let me zoom in on that so we can see. So you're setting the subject to the author class. Yes. So we here see the attributes we have on mm -hmm. author. So I'm taking the name and I drop it on the on the canvas. I take date of birth. Oh. Date of birth, you see that it's a date. Mm -hmm. And I'm dropping it. No. I need to take this field. I drop it on the canvas. I take the library item and he, sh he knows it's a list because there can be multiple library items. So I'll take a tabular list box and I'll drop this here. Then I'm going to do some rearranging, which are. I'm going to center them all vertically. It's nicer. Oh. This is difficult sometimes. Make the name feel a bit mm -hmm. larger. I delete this label. I'll make a larger box of this. this. Oh. Now I'm going to add an extra field, which is not an attribute of author. I'm going to add an entry field, which will contain the age of the ah, author. Okay. Close this one. I double click it, I will change it a bit so it will have the suffix of the year. It will... oh yeah, wait. <laughs> English. Yeah. Okay, and I will also make this without a border and not edit it. So this is our UI we're going to, it's a quick example. We're going to create this UI in the ASUS package. So here it is. The code is really simple. Obic Studio makes a global of each UI you create, which happens with this instruction. And it, uh, no, with the initialize, it will create the UI. Mm -hmm. Here we have the items which are created on the canvas the code, standard code from Obic Studio and we also have an initialization which tells me what the subject class is of the UI. Close the designer and now we're going to generate some, we're going to use some code to open the UI. I'm not going to close this, I'm going to open a workspace So what are we going to do? We're creating an author. Okay. We give him a name, we give him a date of birth. And then we're going to create books that he wrote. So we create a new book, we give it a title, a year, and then we insert the author to the book. We do this uh, one, two, three, four times, and at last we we create a DVD, mm -hmm. and that is also to the author, and 
we are going to open the author view with the subject author. If we execute this, hey, this didn't crash. Apparently, the four plus plus <laughs> uh -huh. gave us a, resu a zero result. Right. So I'm going to change this. I will do this in the modeling tool. I'll make a string of the first one. That should break it. I regenerate the code for the author. Now we should have. Mm -hmm. We'll test to see what it does. A big study is too smart for us. <laughs> <laughs> and now you see the door sort of broken on that. Yeah. I'll just put a halt into it. Put a I bet if you put a comma there it would break. Mm. I don't think so. Okay. I simply put a halt there. I put it in the modeling tool to regenerate. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise we But I already spoiled the surprise, I think. Because we change the class, the code in the class browser, and we get it here. Right. Also in the modeling tool. Okay. So it went both ways. It works both ways. Okay, I showed this, so now I'm going to change the age to the uh, correct instruction. I'll make a date today, years apart, self date of birth. What I really wait. I can do, still do this. Which should generate us an MNU. I proceed. So this should break if we open the UI. So what we should take away from this is that it's darn hard to break Optic Studio. Yeah. <laughs> what did happen? Oh, I know what happens. We didn't execute the code. I forgot something. You didn't execute that code over there. No, but what we should do, when we edited the, when we created the field for the H, mm -hmm. we didn't tell him that it should be linked with the method of uh. author H. We map it. There we go. Close it. File create in. And now, I hope we break it. <laughs> yeah, and there we go. Then we move this over so people can see the debugger that we've been waiting for. The debugger bit. And unlike all of the demos say this is the debugger we wanted to see. Yes. So I debug it. I go to the H method. I change it. We save. We continue. So we get 55 years, right. which is correct. And in the model, we'll see that the age method also has changed. Aha. Uh -huh. So this okay. works from the debugger and from the class browser. So it's round trip engineering. Yes. Okay. Well, that's very cool. I think that's for a first demo, I think it's okay. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Okay. Thanks, Turk. You're welcome. Let's pull this up so we can actually have Dirk on camera here for, well, let's pan this out. There we go. So, thanks, Dirk. You're welcome.